Hello. This is Dan from DIY Domination. Have you ever had issues dealing with crop pests? Do you want to learn how to prevent and treat them? Well, you're in the right place. Picture this. You've put in all the hard work, the sweat, the dedication, and just when you're about to reap the fruits of your labor, you find your crops infested with pests. Quite the nightmare, isn't it? These tiny, unwelcome visitors can wreak havoc on our farms, gardens, and even our peace of mind. But don't worry, there's a way out. In this video, we'll be taking you through a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide on how to prevent these pesky intruders from ruining your hard work and how to treat them if they've already moved in. From crop rotation and companion planting to using organic pesticides and introducing predatory insects, we've got you covered. So, are you ready to tackle those pesky pests? Let's dive right in. By the way, if you like this video and want to see more videos with advice on farming and gardening, make sure to click the subscribe button and leave a comment down below saying, I subscribed, and we'll do our best to reply to your comment. First up, we have the preventive measure of crop rotation. Now you might be wondering what's crop rotation? Well, it's a simple yet effective technique that involves alternating the type of crops grown in a particular field each year. This method disrupts the life cycle of pests keeping them from becoming permanent residents in your fields. You see, different crops attract different pests. By rotating crops, you can prevent the buildup of specific pests in one area. Think of it as a game of musical chairs with pests. Just when they've gotten comfortable with a particular crop, you switch it up on them. They're left guessing, and in their confusion, they can't establish a stronghold. Rotating crops annually is essential to this strategy. The change of crops each year ensures that pests have no time to adapt to a particular crop. So remember, keep those pests guessing with crop rotation. Next, we'll look at companion planting and maintaining healthy soil. Companion planting is a natural and effective way to manage pests, as certain plants can repel pests or attract beneficial insects. For instance, marigolds are known to deter nematodes, while basil can work wonders in repelling mosquitoes and flies. This method not only keeps pests away, but also contributes to biodiversity, enhancing the overall health of your garden or farm. Let's shift our attention to healthy soil practices. The vitality of your soil plays a pivotal role in plant health and pest resistance. Healthy, nutrient-rich soil nurtures robust plant growth, making them less susceptible to pests and diseases. So how do we maintain soil fertility? One way is through the addition of organic matter such as compost. Compost is a rich source of nutrients and contributes to soil structure, improving its ability to hold water and air, both vital for plant growth. Furthermore, compost can host beneficial microbes which can outcompete or even prey on certain pests. Cover crops are another excellent tool for soil health. These are plants grown primarily for the benefit of the soil rather than the crop yield. Cover crops, such as clover or rye, prevent soil erosion, suppress weeds, and can enhance soil fertility by fixing nitrogen from the air into a form plants can use. Lastly, maintaining a proper pH balance in your soil is crucial. Most crops prefer a slightly acidic to neutral soil pH. A balanced pH ensures optimal nutrient availability for your plants, making them healthier and more resistant to pests. It's also worth noting that healthy soil practices are not only good for pest management but also for the environment. They increase soil biodiversity, promote nutrient cycling, and can even help mitigate climate change by storing carbon in the soil. So good companions in healthy soil can keep those pests at bay. Now let's talk about proper watering, diverse planting, and choosing pest-resistant varieties. First, watering. It's not just about hydrating your plants, but also about discouraging pests. How so? Pests are attracted to moist foliage, so when you water, aim at the base of your plants. This way, you keep the foliage dry and less attractive to pests. Also, be wary of overwatering. It can lead to fungal diseases, another issue you'd rather not deal with. Next, we have diverse planting. Now you might be thinking, I've got my favorite crop, why would I want to plant anything else? Well, diversity is key to preventing widespread damage. Different crops attract different pests. So, if one pest targets a particular species, it won't wipe out your entire garden. It's about not putting all your eggs in one basket, or in this case, all your seeds in one type of plant. Lastly, let's discuss pest-resistant varieties. You see, plant breeders have been working tirelessly to develop varieties that are resistant to specific pests prevalent in various areas. These varieties have been bred with certain traits that make them less appealing or more resilient to pests. Choosing these varieties can save you a lot of hassle and heartache down the line, 
It's like having an inbuilt army ready to defend your plants against these pesky invaders. But remember, these techniques are not standalone solutions. They work best when used in conjunction with other strategies. It's like a symphony, each instrument playing its part to create a harmonious melody. In this case, the melody is a thriving, pest-free garden, so keep these points in mind. Proper watering keeps pests at bay, diverse planting safeguards against widespread damage, and pest-resistant varieties are your secret weapon in this battle. And always remember that these methods are part of a broader strategy. Remember, diversity and resistance are your allies in this battle against pests. Moving on, let's discuss the importance of regular inspections and the use of pheromone traps. Regular inspection of your crops is key to early detection of pests. Be vigilant, check for signs such as holes in leaves, discoloration or wilting, which may indicate the presence of pests. Timely discovery allows you to take action before these uninvited guests cause significant damage. Now let's talk about pheromone traps. These are not your average traps. They're designed to monitor and capture specific pests, using the very chemicals the pests produce to communicate with each other. Pheromone traps are a smart strategy to keep tabs on pest population levels. They can alert you to the presence of pests even before they start damaging your crops. Remember, it's not just about growing your crops, it's about protecting them too. Keep a close eye on your crops and set clever traps to catch those pests before they wreak havoc. If pests do manage to sneak past your defenses, it's time for treatment. Let's discuss organic pesticides and predatory insects. Organic pesticides are derived from natural sources and can be a powerful ally in your fight against pests. Let's start with neem oil. This versatile substance is effective against a myriad of pests and even has fungicidal properties. It disrupts the feeding and reproductive cycles of insects, putting a stop to their destructive activities. Next up is insecticidal soap. This is a gentler option, less harmful to beneficial insects, but still packing a punch against soft-bodied pests like aphids and mites. It works by penetrating their outer layers, leading to dehydration and eventually, their downfall. And then we have diatomaceous earth. This natural powder, made from the fossilized remains of tiny aquatic organisms, damages the exoskeleton of insects, causing them to dehydrate and die. It's like laying down a field of microscopic razor blades that are deadly to pests but harmless to your plants. But what if you could turn pests' natural enemies to your advantage? That's where predatory insects come in. These are insects that prey on other insects, often the ones causing trouble in your garden. Take ladybugs, for instance. These cute little beetles are voracious predators of aphids, mites, and other pests. By introducing them to your garden, you're essentially hiring an army of tiny pest controllers. Then there are lacewings. These delicate insects are anything but when it comes to pest control. Their larvae are known as aphid lions for their appetite for these common pests. And let's not forget, parasitic wasps. Now don't worry these aren't the kind to ruin your summer picnic. These small wasps lay their eggs inside pests. When the eggs hatch, the larvae consume their host, effectively controlling pest populations. With the right tools and tactics you can fight back against these invaders and reclaim your crops. We hope that you found this step-by-step -step guide to preventing and treating crop pests useful. We've walked through a variety of proactive measures, from the power of crop rotation, companion planting, and healthy soil practices, to the importance of proper watering. We've also discussed the benefits of diverse planting, pest-resistant varieties, and the use of mulch. We emphasized the role of regular inspection and pheromone traps in monitoring your crops. And in the event of an infestation, we covered the advantages of organic pesticides, the introduction of predatory insects, and the use of biological insecticides. We also touched on physical barriers like crop covers, as well as hand-picking and quarantining infected plants. Remember, a combination of these strategies might be most effective. Tailor your approach to the specific pests and crops in your region, and always follow safety guidelines when using any pesticides. Happy farming, and here's to pest-free crops! If you like this video, then make sure to also watch these videos for more DIY farming and gardening tips and tricks.